On the agenda tonight, we're going back to the late 60s. We're going to be taking a look at Shocking Blue and they're going to be performing Venus. Hello, Phil here from Wings of Pegasus and welcome to another analysis video. If you enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. So this is going to be a live performance of the song because I know that there are a lot of videos on YouTube that look like they're live but have the original audio overdubbed. So. We will jump into this, and because this is a live performance, it means that we don't have the organ in there, which is quite prominent on the original studio release. When I say studio release, this song was actually recorded on a two-track, believe it or not. But anyway, back to this. Because it's only about three and a half minutes in length, we'll watch it the whole way through, and then we'll get into the analysis after. Of course, as always, there's going to be a link in the description below if you guys just want to watch this video over and over again. But let's jump into it, see how they get on. And there we have it. As you can see, it jumps straight into an interview, I believe in Dutch, at the end of the video. But getting into the song, because it's great. It's just based around, you know, a guitar riff, but really a bass riff, the way that it just kind of ascends and descends. And it's a really hooky riff. And this live version is great as well, because you get a lot more of the guitars in there, of course, because there isn't the organ in there. You just focus in on that rhythm and it's quite heavy sound. So it's almost like a rocked up version of the original, especially with the lead vocal. And this is Mariska's lead vocal, which is 
kind of husky and it's all in the same range. I mean, we haven't got loads of octaves being spanned here, but this is the point about it being just a straight ahead, simple uh, progression, even chords wise, but just a simple song. <laughs> but I mean, some things are great because of their simplicity. And this is an example of it. When I'm saying about it being simple, when we're talking about technique and guitar playing, it actually isn't simple. And I will point out a few things about it. I know that some people will say about Mariska's vocals sounding a little bit huskier than normal, or at least on the record. And I think you've got to understand that this song went to number one in nine countries, I think, when it was released. So they're obviously playing, performing a lot. But if you listen to the original and you really focus in on her voice, it's actually a really similar vocal performance. It's the mood that you're really tapping into. And that's what music is all about. We're not looking at, and we're not looking at the pitch monitoring software here, but you can hear that in the chorus, we're ever so slightly below where you expect the note to be, but that's the same in the original. And that's all you can ask for when you're listening to a band perform, that it's sounding like the record that was released. And we certainly get that here. Another thing that's really impressive about this vocal performance is that there isn't any fallback, seemingly. I couldn't see any on stage. So it means that Mariska is singing and is not hearing her voice coming back at her at the front of the stage, which is a really important thing to be able to hear your own voice. So the fact that she's as accurate as she is, is very impressive considering that now we've just got a guitar blasting out behind her and a drum kit and the bass. So instruments are very loud, especially the drum kit. When you're performing on a small stage like this and the vocalist is having to supply that vocal standing in front of the drummer, it can be really difficult to just get the pitch or even be anywhere close to where the instrumentation is. Just range wise as well, if you're interested, this is sung in the lower mezzo soprano range. So it means that we're in and around our G4 and there's, you know, this melody line that we have in uh, the verse, which sounds a lot like a Bon Jovi song that a lot of people will know. <laughs> but anyway, going. Um, so the G4, that's where we are for the start of the verse. But then when we get into the chorus, we're, so we're only really going up a tone. So two semitones from the G up to the A. And again, this is A4. So they're not super high notes. And th these are notes that, you know, you know, that guys would be able to hit. So yeah, not a really high vocal, but it's all about the melody. It's just catchy, it's hooky. And sometimes you don't need to go up by an octave or more if you've got a really strong melody. And we've certainly got that here because it's paired with just great guitar playing, but great guitar parts because of the rhythm that we've got in there. So, you know, when we're on in this E minor shape, we're going from E minor over to an A. So this. And we have that muted kind of slap on the strings, that muted strum sound. So we're kind of catching the strings. This isn't gonna be an instructional video, as I always say, but if you did want to play along, that verse is going from that E minor over to the A. I believe in the chorus we've got A minor to the D, E minor again, C, and B7 sus4, and I think this is what we have in the intro as well. I do prefer the slightly heavier version of it, but let's have a listen again. I mean, you can really hear that you know, smacking of the strings. You know, it's kind of letting it all hang out there, which is great. 
And then we've got that again. That aggressive way of strumming. You know, really letting it go, which you can see in the video. You know, he's really letting that, that rhythm arm get into this and dig in. And of course, that's going to give it so much more personality and it's going to give it a particular sound rather than having a kind of a more kind of understated <laughs> strumming pattern so it's just setting the scene exactly how it's going to be in the rest of the performance you know it's just all in And, I mean, just a couple of things about the riff that we get because the bass comes in and because the guitar's playing the rhythm here, it's not going to be played by the guitar. Just to point out a little bit of trivia that you probably already know, that Mariska, when she starts singing, she says a godness uh, rather than a goddess. And that is just because there's a spelling mistake on the lyric sheet that she was reading from when they recorded the song so it's on the original and it's in live performances so it might have just been one of those things that was a mistake but then because it was recorded like that they just kept it in and they are from the netherlands so english isn't their first language so it's totally understandable you might also hear in her voice that she's got this quite wide vibrato that just comes in now and again at the end of lines so it's this kind of Na, 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 na. Ha, ha. That kind of wobble. Let's just have a listen to point it out. And it's only kind of a couple of wobbles that we get right at the end of the vocal. But again, it's just something that gives her, sa her, her sound, but her, her voice, this extra little bit of expression and just something interesting to grab you at the end of the vocal rather than just na 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 and, and just kind of keeping it straight so yeah it just makes it a little bit more interesting but getting back into this bass riff which is so prominent in this live performance and it's great because we have this um, um yeah just keeps on pedaling on which which is great and it's going to be going through the whole performance just while we have Robbie Van Leeuwen on screen playing guitar supplying those harmony vocals he wrote this song as well and I think a lot of people know the original or it might depend on where you're from but Banana Rama did a cover in the 80s but I think certainly in the UK being in Europe as well and the fact that uh, this was released in the Netherlands to begin with that a lot of people here know the original song. But we will jump back into it, listen on a little bit further and see what else happens. These little breaks that we have, and that was... Um, now there's a little slide, semitone slide on the A. A sharp to the B and starting with I'll play the riff kind of like that into then the A minor That's it. this is the bit that I showed you before so in this solo I mean we've got just a bunch of technique going on because I mean it kind of sounds like we have this slide up that kind of thing but we get this triplet sound to it so it's almost like when sliding up it, but it's not like this we don't kind of hear and we don't hear all of those notes you know happening and it's not like a sweep, but I think what's, what is happening is that we have the slide up and he might have a muted string in there. 
and not actually fretting it, so we don't hear it. We definitely get this this kind of triplet sound to it, and and then we'd slide down. You know, it's really subtle, but I can put a little bit more volume. You get that kind of effect before then. And I think there's then a pre bend when we go down. Let's have another listen to this. Oh, it's kind of um. So the bend comes in straight away. But you've got to just bend it a little bit to do the pre-bend to then let it come down. And, and this is all played straight actually. So no kind of vibrato. Just a load of technique in that. It's going to take a lot of practice to get this solo down accurately if you're wanting to take it on. Especially with the... You know, the bends, the subtlety of the hitting the high E string and already having that bend <laughs> ready to come down again. And now we've got this. And here, again, we're not going, we're not kind of bending all the way up. We're going. So it's very much more of a kind of bluesy bend than <laughs> kind of getting too happy with it. And we've got that same kind of feel going. And again, you know, just straight notes. And... It's a little slide down. kind of go down to the open E string at the end. But what's in there is really impressive from not only a musical standpoint, but a technique standpoint in order to get this down and play it, especially in a live setting like this, because that is certainly fiddly, kind of <laughs> working your way up that high and getting that muted sound to the strings and just raking across the strings, because that's what's going on here. It's not a jump from the... We're not kind of going downstroke, upstroke. It's more like that. Yeah, so. so a shorter video for tonight, or at least it feels like that, because, I mean, sometimes this is the case that you can just have a really cool song that is really straightforward, you know, from the E over to an A, and then A minor. You know, we're just doing exactly the same thing, but in two different positions on the guitar. But the same changes, and then we've just got that, you know, <laughs> really simple end to the chorus. But it's great, and we've just got that bass riff in there, but this is it. Sometimes in music, just keeping it simple is the best thing to do. And over complicating things often detracts from the music and the things that are just integral to what we connect to. And this is what's great about this song, a really good example of how you only need a few chords and a great bass line, some really cool rhythm guitar going on, nice solo. I mean, once you start adding it all up, you think, oh, this is why it is so good because we have all of these elements that are really good independently. And then when you add them together and put Mariska's vocal over the top, you just get something that sounds great and it's just a standalone track and probably the reason why it's been covered so many times and so famously anyway thank you guys for requesting this video for me to take a look at and as always keep the suggestions and requests coming in the comment section below let me know what you guys think and if you did enjoy this video please give it a thumbs up and subscribe and i'll catch you guys at the next one rock <laughs>